What's up guys? I hope y'all are having a great day today. Just full of so much positivity and happiness, dude. Because another day, another piece of damage control from the AAA video game industry in the wonderful modern gaming landscape. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. Now today we're going to be talking about the continual dumpster fire that is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 and what used to be my most anticipated game for this year turned out to be nothing but a complete and total disappointment on pretty much every single front you can imagine. The campaign was absolutely horrible and it was basically a bunch of bullshit little Warzone light missions that you can tell were originally supposed to just be Warzone events that they basically collected and said hey let's slap this shit together and call it a campaign and that is exactly what happened because overall the campaign is a complete and total clusterfuck and I don't know anyone who has actually enjoyed it genuinely and on top of that the multiplayer is in my opinion a massive downgrade from last year it's just a bunch of recycled modern warfare 2 maps that you know really required zero effort on the part of sledgehammer and these maps were supposed to originally be added to modern warfare 2 over the course of the first year year as additional content but once again they decided to pull that and hold it for the next game so they could slap together a multiplayer and call it a sequel but I think the biggest offender in the case of the multiplayer is the increased time to kill which is just horrible man it makes me not even want to play this game whatsoever until they add a rust 24 7 mode because when you combine it with the large mw2 maps it's just it's not fun and traditionally in the modern warfare franchise time to kill has always been low but I'm thinking they raised the time to kill for two reasons to make it feel distinct enough to be considered a sequel when in reality this is literally modern warfare 2's multiplayer repackaged with a little extra content and also to get people ready for warzone gunfights because the 150 health is more in line with what players will experience if they're playing warzone rather than call of duty multiplayer and then when you couple that with the fact that call of duty zombies is literally just dmz with zombies body armor and everything this game feels like like literally just one big war zone pipeline and overall that is the reason why I think it's so fucking terrible it literally feels like a demo for a better more feature complete game that already launched last year this game should have stayed as DLC instead of being its own standalone release and I think things would be in a much better place and you may be questioning well isn't the game still selling well are people still playing it yes the game is going to sell well it's a Call of Duty game even when Infinite Warfare came out it was still the best selling game of the year despite how fucking notoriously bad and piss poor the reception was over that game. Call of Duty will always sell well, but in comparison to other entries in the franchise, Modern Warfare 3 is not doing well sales wise or player count wise, and we have an actual statistic of this. So, according to this article from Dexerto, Modern Warfare 3 falls short of Modern Warfare 2 launch with huge player count drop. Now, something to keep in mind when it comes to this player count which is pretty interesting is the fact that when modern warfare 2 launched on steam warzone was not included in that so this is solely the number of people who bought the game to play the multiplayer mode day one i think it was a month or two after launch that they actually added warzone and dmz to the game so this is solely a modern warfare 2 multiplayer number which makes this even worse in the case of modern warfare 3 so in october of 2022 modern warfare 2 peaked at 262,875 players on Steam during the game's launch weekend. Now, on the other hand, Modern Warfare 3, now keep in mind, this includes Modern Warfare 2 numbers, this includes Warzone players, and Modern Warfare 3 players. The game peaked at 190,273 concurrent players. So even with Modern Warfare 2's numbers bundled in there, with War Warzone's numbers bundle in there, with DMZ's numbers bundled in there, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 only peaked at 190,000 players during launch weekend at the peak of the hype, including the numbers for Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone. That is absolutely fucking 
terrible, dude. So anybody who is actually acting like this game is out here breaking records or anything like that, a 70,000 peak concurrent player count drop when you have another game boosting those numbers already is absolutely terrible no matter how you spin it. That number should have been massively higher just for that fact alone. So what we're looking at realistically is potentially a 40% drop off on day one players compared to last year's release, which is pretty significant. Now, of course, the console numbers might vary, but Steam is the only objective metric that we have when it comes to measuring player counts and populations because they're the only platform that reports real-time player counts, so anything else is pure speculation, but I think it's reasonable to assume that most other platforms are going to follow a similar trend, especially when you consider the fact that Steam has more monthly active users than both PlayStation and Xbox combined. I think it's a pretty good indicator of the overall market trend for this game and I really don't think there's any defense whatsoever because this number should have basically been by default higher than Modern Warfare 2 because the way Steam counts the player count on Modern Warfare 3 is through the Call of Duty HQ app which includes Warzone, Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, and DMZ. So it's a cumulative number. It's not just an individual number for Modern Warfare Warfare 3. So that's what makes this even worse is the more and more games that get added to this Call of Duty HQ app, the more people we should see at launch by default just because of all the other people who didn't buy the game but are playing a different game within the Call of Duty franchise. Now given all the controversies surrounding Modern Warfare 3 going around online, Sledgehammer Games actually put out a statement from Aaron Hallen, the studio head of Sledgehammer Games, and it reads as follows. We're incredibly proud of Modern Warfare 3. Both the full game experience at launch and the upcoming year of content we have planned for the community. On behalf of the extremely talented team across Sledgehammer Games and our partner studios with whom we've collaborated on development, this has been a labor of love to lead the first ever back-to-back -back sequel in Call of Duty. We cannot wait to see our community's reaction to all the entire game has to offer across campaign Bruh. multiplayer and zombies from the start of development we have been laser focused after austin posted this i got completely flooded with hate i mean bombarded practically to the degrees i've never experienced before like this guy has five million subscribers i've got two hundred thousand. This dude laser focused his fan base on me by putting my face gigantic in the thumbnail there. On creating the next groundbreaking Call of Duty game long before we wrapped up our previous game, we heard loud and clear from fans about the desire to stay and play together for longer within the same series, and that's what we've delivered. The first true sequel in franchise history, it is also why we added features like Carry Forward for the first time to honor the investment our players have made in the Modern Warfare series. We're proud to be the team to lead the way on Modern Warfare 3. We have worked hard to deliver on this vision, which has been years in the making. Bruh. Anything said to the contrary is simply not true. Bruh. This is our game, and we cannot wait to play it online with all of you. Yeah, if this isn't a massive crock of horse shit, I don't know what the fuck is, man. This is so obviously corporate damage control. I mean, dude, really? You're proud out of that campaign like are you shitting me that campaign is universally hated they have to know how shitty it is they have to know how crappy the zombies mode and how half-assed it feels is they have to know the fact that recycling the same multiplayer maps that came out what 14 years ago with zero new maps added to the multiplayer and pretty much relying on the entire gun catalog of the previous modern warfare and only including a handful of new guns here and there in comparison yeah no bullshit this is not years in the making. Maybe the DLC plans for Modern Warfare 2 were years in the making, but the decision to turn that DLC into a standalone game definitely was not years in the making, and that is 100% complete and total cope. And you could very easily prove this point to be completely false because there's actually a report going around, which is pretty interesting, that the Modern Warfare 3 Xbox disc apparently installs Modern Warfare 
Warfare 2 without internet, which shows you how reliant this game is on Modern Warfare 2 and how it's not even its own standalone game. So apparently this guy got his copy of Modern Warfare 3 on disc, popped it into his Xbox with no internet connection, and these are the highlights. The Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 Xbox disc installs Modern Warfare 2 if there is no internet as reported. Installing Modern Warfare 2 required over 12.4 gigabytes of data and the files for Modern Warfare 3 were uploaded as add-ons. Modern Warfare 3 needed to be updated after going online which took an extra 168 gigabytes of data to become playable. So there you have it guys. This game is literally so grounded in the fact that it was originally supposed to be DLC for Modern Warfare 2 that when you pop the disc into your console 99% of the install size is literally just Modern Warfare 2 files. But yet we're supposed to believe that this game was years in the making as they would like to claim. Yeah, fucking right, dude. This is absolutely comical in my personal opinion and, you know, just going back to the campaign, dude, I actually played the original Modern Warfare 3 campaign on stream last night and holy shit, man, it is a night and day difference at how much more epic in scale, just well-written, interesting, emotional, cinematic, and just fun that game is by comparison. And that's a perfect example of Sledgehammer taking up the mantle of Modern Warfare as a franchise and actually delivering something great, which I think is even more ironic considering the naming convention that Sledgehammer helped develop the original Modern Warfare 3 and now they've quote unquote developed this second version of Modern Warfare 3, but this time it's literally worse in every single way imaginable. So that was definitely kind of an interesting comparison to make, especially in regards to the campaign because the campaigns in both games are the same length, about three hours hours long if you play it on an easier difficulty, but the three hours you'll spend in the original Modern Warfare 3 campaign are so much more memorable, action-packed, and overall just better in every single way to the point where it feels like 30 minutes have gone by rather than three hours compared to the absolute fucking slop that is the Modern Warfare 3 2023 campaign that is a so-called standalone game and totally not just a bunch of Warzone missions repackaged that were supposed to come out in the first year of Modern Warfare 2's Warzone seasons, but of course not, man. This has been years in the making. This has been planned for years, bro. Sledgehammer's been working on this night and day, making sure that it's the true sequel that it was always intended to be. But anyway, guys, what are y'all's thoughts on this in the comments section below? Are you enjoying Modern Warfare 3? Are you enjoying watching the progressive dumpster fire just continue to burn? Because in all honesty, dude, this was supposed to be my most anticipated anticipated game of the year. I went in expecting to basically love this game because I really enjoyed Modern Warfare 2 2022 from a multiplayer perspective and in every single way this game has been a complete and utter disappointment for me which is really a shame because there's nothing more than I would like than to actually enjoy a Call of Duty Modern Warfare game because this is officially the first game in the Modern Warfare franchise that I really just have zero desire to play man and that's really sad because prior to this Modern Modern Warfare 3 was undisputedly my favorite first-person shooter franchise of all time. Well, I guess the original three can keep that title. This bastardized reboot trilogy, aside from the first two games having fun multiplayer, have been a complete disappointment in living up to the legacy of the original three games. And, well, I think Modern Warfare 3 is just the perfect example of everything wrong with the modern video game industry. And, you know, I'm glad to see that it's actually getting as much pushback as you can reasonably expect from a Call of Duty game. So overall, I am kind of sad and happy to see it not doing as well as it could have done, but at the same time, all things considered, I would much rather be enjoying this game than sitting here shitting on it, watching it fail. But anyway, let me know your thoughts on this in the comments section below, and if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like on it. I would greatly appreciate it, and as always, I do want to thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day to check out this video, and for all the recent support as well you guys are the fucking best and i really do appreciate it so with that shit said i will catch you guys next time